what's up you guys and welcome to this video. Today I've got a fun one for you. I recently spent some time with the Canon P, a classic rangefinder from the glory days of rangefinders. This camera was paired with a Canon LTM 50mm f1.8 lens. Now, there's a lot of hype surrounding this rangefinder in particular. My homie Scott bought this camera around the same time I bought my Leica M3. And he said to me, Talia, I don't think I need to buy a Leica. I got this Canon P and I think it's good enough. And I was like, big words, big homie, big words. So I was curious, I was curious. A year later, <laughs> so this winter, I asked Scott to slide that Canon P my way and let me find out what it do because I wanted to know, was he on to something or was he just being cheap and not wanting to buy like it? Which I wouldn't blame him for because like is are expensive. So let's see what I got up to while I had the Canon P in my possession. And one, two, and three. And one, two, and three. And one, two, and three. Three. 
in one, two, three. This video is sponsored by Walters Camera Repair. And if you have a camera in need of servicing or repair, make Walters your go-to shop for quality and fair pricing. Website in the description below and tell them Talia sent you. As you saw, I took the camera to Venice Beach on an unfortunate rainy day. So the fact that it did just tells you how much the weather app on the iPhone is full of crap. It doesn't know what it's talking about. I have a better shot at estimating the weather before I leave the house than my app does. And I might as well just start. Hmm. I think it may be cloudy today. Oh, no, no, it's gonna hail. The second time out with the camera, I decided to shoot some portraits. I was like, Kareem, as always, the homie Kareem, you know. Y'all are gonna get to love him as much as I do because he's in so many of these videos. <laughs> so I did a couple different things. I used the same film stock for both shoots, Ultrafine Extreme 400, mostly because I need to use this film so that I can get those canisters back so I can bulk load some other film. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. Trigger warning. Now, I know some people get really hyped when we talk about cameras and we do camera reviews. I know this because these people who are overzealous, fanatics, impassioned, they go into my comment section and they add all kinds of crazy because I don't talk about certain things that they want to hear about regarding the camera. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, right here. When I talk about a camera, I'm talking about the camera from my perspective using the camera. I'm talking to you about this camera as the photographer that I am. I'm talking about the things that I care about as it pertains to the camera. The following assessment of the Canon P are my opinions. Take them with a grain of salt, as I do with most people's opinions. You are more than welcome to disagree with me. I implore you to go into my comment section and articulate why you disagree. I am fine with that. At the end of the day, we're talking about cameras. Cameras, not world hunger. So let's keep perspective here. Hand check. I have to say, I think the Canon P is a straightforward, easy to use type of camera. There's no bells and whistles associated with this camera. It's like just to the point. And I like that about a camera. It's fully mechanical. There's no light meter. As long as you have a handle on the uh, exposure triangle, you should have no problems using this camera and making images. This camera is relatively lightweight at this point in the game for me. Most 35 millimeter cameras are lightweight given all of the heavy medium format cameras I've been lugging around. Canon P is very modest in appearance to me. This is the kind of camera you can walk around with in most scenarios and not be stopped by anyone because it just kind of blends, you know? It's not an intimidating looking camera at all. Very, very uh, subtle looking camera. Now for me, the camera didn't feel like my camera in my hand. It felt a little bit off and it wasn't as thick as I would have liked it to be. It felt a bit long. It just felt weird in my hand. It didn't feel natural. Now this is very nitpicky, but like this is something that I take into account when using cameras. Like, do I want to pick this camera up and use it? Does it feel natural in my hand? And for me, it's a no on the hand check because of this factor. But if I were you, I wouldn't let this information stop me from picking it up and trying it out if I was able to do so. Viewfinder. Now I have some gripes when it comes to the viewfinder. First of all, I didn't think the patch was all that great. It's kind of like, I don't know if it's supposed to be a circle or a square. It's kind of fuzzy looking in there, but I do know it was kind of hard when shooting portraits to line up my subject's eye. Try to make sure my aperture was high enough so that I, as long as I was close, it would be sharp. Uh, on the street, it was kind of like the same deal, high enough aperture, kind of make sure I was gonna get what I was going for into focus. And another thing I didn't like about the viewfinder is that it had multiple frame lines inside. So it have a 50 millimeter frame line, it have a 35 millimeter frame line, 
into a 28 millimeter frame line, etc. I did not love this because when I'm quickly moving around outside and trying to frame up a shot, it would throw me off. I'm looking at the widest frame line first, naturally. So I, I did not appreciate having so many lines that wouldn't go away. If they went away, that'd have been nice, but they were just staying there. So I didn't love that at all. Please no, I don't like to zone focus. It's not my number one option. Like I'll do it in a pinch when I'm feeling nervous about a shot, but typically I just, if I want the shot and I want it focused, I'm going to go and I'm going to use that patch. I'm going to make sure my image is sharp because I care about sharpness. If you don't care about sharpness that much, then don't focus your little heart out. I especially like to use the patch when I'm taking portraits because I want to get the person's face in focus. So yeah, for me, the patch is less than ideal. Glass. I'd say the glass associated with the Canon P is top notch. I'm a huge fan of the Canon thread mount lenses. As you guys already know, I have a Canon 50mm f1.4 lens that I use on my Leica M3 and I love that lens. And before you jump in my comments crushing me about using the Canon LTM lens on my Leica M3, can I live yo? Leica glass is expensive. I've been looking. You know I've been looking, okay? I have to save for that kind of investment and have to consider life choices too, okay? About midway through my time with this camera, Scott slid me a 35 millimeter Jupiter lens. Unfortunately, I couldn't work out how to mount this lens to the camera. And when Scott came through and tried to do it himself, he also struggled a bit. Um, but by that point, I was over using that lens with this camera, so I did not shoot those two together. I can't give you feedback on it, but just know that mounting that lens in particular is not a cakewalk. Price point. So the body of the Canon P typically goes for around $200. Depending on which lens you pair with it, you could be looking at around $89 to $300 more to get this camera system fully kitted. You also have to take into account the condition of both the camera and the lens that you'll be purchasing. If you're hoping to get this camera in good working condition and aesthetically pleasing to the eye, you'll probably be spending between $285 to $525 on average. Final thoughts. I think the Canon P is a wonderful camera. Um, I've had people ask me in the past, do I think that the Canon P or the Canon 7S is comparable to the Leica? And I could never really answer because I had not used either camera at the time that they asked. But that's no longer the case. That's the Canon 7S right there. <laughs> I have opinions now. But in regards to the Canon P being close to the Leica M3, for me, it's, it's a no. I just, I like the build of the Leica M3 more than the Canon P. And I like the viewfinder tons more than the Canon P. So those two things would stop me from saying that the Canon P is comparable to the uh, Leica M3. But I will say to stay tuned for my takes on the Canon 7S if you are considering uh, one of these two cameras being closest to the Leica M3. Okay, so those are my first impressions of the Canon P. Would I buy this camera? No. Will my opinions change? Will I grow to love this camera? Probably not, because I'm not planning on buying this camera. Like I didn't like this camera enough to sell my Leica M3 and go purchase three or four of these. So this is probably where my Canon P discussion is gonna end for me. If you're looking to get into range finders and you want a step above a Canon uh, QL17, a step above an Olympus SP range finder, if you're looking for that next tier of range finders, I can see you copping this and getting more acquainted with range finder cameras as more like a mid-level kind of a range finder. But I also have not used a Bessa yet, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, one day I will get my hands on a Bessa and I can give more of a or thorough opinion on like the levels of these rangefinders, but for me the Canon P is not a camera that I will be buying in the future. But yet at the same time I fully understand why people like it so much and why they lean into it. Live your bliss. So if you're able to I encourage you to try this camera out, but I would also encourage you to try out <laughs> the Canon 7S <laughs> as well. And if you're able to to try out a Leica M3. If you live in a city where share grid is popping, you can definitely try out these cameras before you purchase them because you may find out that you don't have to feel the Canon P in your hand either. It feels weird. Who knows? Could be something else. And it's like that sometimes. Sometimes you come across a camera that everybody loves and, and you are just like, 
you know? You're that awkward person in the room that's like, I don't get it. And I'm here to tell you, it's okay to be that person. It happens to me more than you would think. So many more cameras to try and that may be for you. So go out into the world and look for that camera. Look for your true camera or your several true cameras. You know how it is as film photographers. They all speak to us on some level. Then we look up one day and we have too many for no good reason. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever tried out the Canon P. What do you love about the camera? What do you hate about the camera? Before you go, please make sure to give this video a like. It tells the algorithm to stop hating on me and to share my videos. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel because I would love to have you. And I will see you in the next one. All right, everybody. Peace. Can we focus? Can we do it? Can you do it? Oh, there you go. You got it. You got that. You got that. You got that. All right, I need to get this going. I'm getting tired. I'm also hungry. All right, let's get it.